Well, would you look at that? Some careless person has left a bunch of rebar sticking out of a concrete slab. Why, someone could come along and trip on that and split their noggin open. If only there were a tool to deal with such things. G'day everyone, today we have another rebar cutter. That's one odd looking angle grinder. On the bench for your pleasure today we have the DSC250. This is a specialized rebar cutter. If you have a look at it up to where my hand is, it basically just looks like an angle grinder. It's an angle grinder body, but the other end is a little bit more specialized. What on earth is going on here? This is the third rebar cutter I have reviewed recently and this one is the most specialized of the three because it doesn't just cut rebar, it's designed to cut rebar flush with the surface of concrete. Now it won't do it dead flush but it gets it pretty darn close. Now most of you aren't going to be in the need for one of these are you? And neither am I, I have borrowed this tool, I have not purchased it, they're not cheap, it's a specialized tool. I have used one before and I used one at a Makita Roadshow years ago when they came out. And today I'm going to tell you about it and do some cuts. We'll try and keep this video a little bit shorter than usual. Every time I try that it's always a failure. Anyway, let's go. It's got a standard click on, click off slide style switch. Like a basic angle grinder. Unlike a basic angle grinder this is much slower. This is obviously geared inside here to keep it slower because We've got a metal blade here with teeth on it, not an abrasive wheel. So you want to run those a bit slower, else you're going to burn them out real fast and potentially break something and have steel flying everywhere. Because an angle grinder this size normally runs at about 9000 RPM. Whereas this blade is only spinning at 2200 RPM. You can cut steel rod up to 1 inch or 25 millimeters in diameter. The side handle can be mounted here, here, or even here. It's another one of those tools that I'm dying to pull apart. Although there is a stain where grease and oil comes out around this area here, all the way around that join. So, hmm, seeing as it's not my tool, once again I don't think I'll pull it apart. Might just take this cap off, see what's under there, probably just the end of a spindle or something. And we'll remove this base so we can see how they get the blade so flat. Normally with an angle grinder you'd have a big flange on there, a big nut holding it on and the spindle coming through. So you wouldn't be able to cut very flat to your surface, but this blade, I know how easy it is to see there on the camera, but it's pretty much hard up against this black metal plate on the bottom here. So we'll take that off and have a look at the blade and how it attaches. Even the steel base plate must have sleeves welded onto it so that these machine screws can go into it. Um, let's open that up and have a look at how the blade goes on, eh? Anything exciting here in the top? No. It looks nice though. Settle out. There's nothing better than pulling apart a tool on a Thursday afternoon. Alright, what does she look like? Well, that's exactly what I thought it would look like. But as for this area, as you can see, specialized blade there. Ain't gonna be a cheap one for you. And it seems to be made in the Philippines, which is a bit different. Let's whip that off. There's a spindle lock button on the top, just like an angle grinder. So, looks like we just got an Allen key here. So, if we turn it, it just turns. Where's that spindle lock? There it is. I'm not sure how many cuts you get off one of these blades, but you're going to want to look after it. So this area here, not too dissimilar to an angle grinder. It's a 24 tooth blade, it's 110 millimeters in diameter. And by the looks, that's pressed on there. Yeah, that ain't coming off. You're buying the blade with this attached. I'm gonna have to go look that up, see how difficult it is to get one of these. What sort of money it costs. That is gonna be a dear little blade. So, pretty cool, and no risk of you putting it on the wrong way around, seeing as that is attached to it. Alright, back in position, that in the middle. Hope I don't damage this brand new blade for this person. They didn't tell me the blade was like that. So after a quick run through on the Google machine, I have found that this will set you back around 55, 60 pounds, 120 New Zealand, and the dearest price I actually saw was in the US, which is strange. And on Amazon in the US, it's 155 US dollars, so... It's not a cheap little blade, that's for sure. 
Right, now I'm going to put that cover back on and we'll go do a cut. I wonder if many guys run this without the plate on the bottom, just so that you get another couple of millimetres closer to that flush cut. You've got nice new concrete surfaces, it shouldn't be a problem really to run it without it. I'm not telling you to do it though. Don't shoot the messenger. But it would get you a much closer, nicer finish. But it might wear out this aluminium a bit quick. It's got this big orange bit on the front here to make you aware of where you should slide in your rebar from. Because the blade's spinning in this orientation, whee! you want your rebar up against this side so that the blade is pushing into it. Put it in this side, it's potentially going to damage your blade as it's going to pull the tool across as it hits it. And due to the cost of that blade, you don't want to damage it very quickly. Right, I'll just go see if someone has carelessly left any rebar sticking out of some concrete somewhere. And when you see me using this thing in a few seconds, you shouldn't see any sparks because with a blade like this, it should be spark free. The other two cutters I used in previous videos were also spark free, but they worked in a completely different way with a piston on hydraulics cutting, whereas this, obviously the blade is spinning pretty fast with carbide teeth and will hopefully not make any sparks. Cut time. Hopefully this doesn't fire shit straight at the camera. It leaves a much nicer cut surface than the other two rebar cutters I reviewed recently. Now once cut they are of course still sticking above the surface a bit, but if you have a look just there that's where the steel was and I've just measured it four millimeters. So that's pretty good. And you've cut it off without damaging your concrete like you might have done if you'd used an angle grinder. Try cutting to within four millimeters when you've got this going on. You've got way more than four millimeters just here with this flange and the spindle coming through and then if you're using a guard which of course you should, then makes it even harder to get it on the right angle. And if you stuff it up, you might end up with a disc that looks like this. Won't have that problem on the other tool. And as you cut, of course, this gets smaller, makes it harder and harder, the angle keeps having to change. Whereas this is always the same diameter. around 12 mil or half an inch with the angle grinder. So the DSC 250 is three times better. Right, that was good fun. What else is there to say? Well, I guess one thing that I should say is that it is an LXT 18 volt tool, not an XGT. There's no XGT model of this tool as of yet, and if you are after one, I wouldn't hold your breath. Be a long time, I imagine, before they make this as an XGT, if ever. Can't imagine there's a huge demand for this tool but it's very nice to use if you do need one of these sorts of things. It's quieter than I thought it would be. It cuts quickly, smoothly. It doesn't feel like it's got all that much power when you're cutting, but it still cuts nice and quick. All the rebar that you saw me cut was 16 millimeter or 5 eighths of an inch. So not small stuff. And it did it with relative ease. So now I can give this back to the rightful owner and they can have their fun with it. I still have more rebar tools to review, believe it or not. I'm going to stick them over on my new channel, Rebar and Stuff. And I'll put those other rebar videos up here and down in the description. And until next time, have a good one, and I'll see you later. Keep cutting that rebar. Oh, yeah. Bloody 40 volt charge is loud. Crikey. I managed to keep that one pretty short, didn't I? I guess I won't know until I finished editing this thing.